Hey everybody, welcome back. We really hope you enjoyed our reading of the book Too Many Carrots um, by um, Katie Hudson. And um, we're going to do a fun craft today that has to obviously do with carrots. And I found um, that it was really fun to do a popsicle stick craft to make them into little carrots. And I did two different types here that we can choose from. Um, it's not that difficult to make and it's made with things that most of you have at home this time of year. So what you're going to need to make our homemade carrots is some construction paper or even scrapbook paper if you have scrapbook paper at home that is orange like that or like that color would be good or even with printed words on it you can use that if you like or just plain construction paper works too. Um, you're going to need some Easter grass or some streamers, crepe paper. You can also use tissue paper or just more construction paper for the leafy part if you don't have um, any of those materials. Um, you're going to want to use clear rubber bands if you're using the Easter grass. Um, you're going to need paint, but if you don't have paint, you can also use markers to color your popsicle sticks. Um, you are going to need three popsicle sticks for every carrot you make. Um, or if you are um, crafty, you might have colored craft sticks at home already. And you could use the orange ones out of these packets if you have those. But if you don't, then we'll have to color your popsicle sticks. And that's what you'll need the paint for or the markers. And you're also going to need some glue, um, a pencil, and a ruler, and a paintbrush, and obviously and some ribbon. And that's how we're going to make our carrots today. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. The first thing that I recommend you do is to color your um, popsicle sticks because if you're painting them, these do take a little bit of time to dry. I also recommend that you not use tempura paint or watercolor paint because it, you'll have to do tons and tons and tons of coats. The wood from the popsicle stick just soaks up all that water and it doesn't leave much color behind. But if you use um, a tempura paint, um, you get a nice bright orange color. Um, I have um, in my cupboard uh, Kids Paint by Crayola that work out really good. Um, but maybe you need to make orange because maybe all you have in your pantry is red and yellow. And this is a really good opportunity to teach kids about how to make um, colors change. So you're going to want just a little bit of red. You don't need a lot. And you want to use like a, a plate or something to mix these all on. And you're going to need some yellow. And you want to add a little bit more to that. And then you want to take your paintbrush. And you want to mix it around until it forms an orange. Now that's kind of a dark orange. I kind of like my orange to be a little bit brighter. So we're going to add more yellow. And as your kids play with this, they can really see how more or less of one color can really brighten or darken it. If we add too much red, you'll end up with a dark red orange. Too much yellow, you'll end up with a light orange or a yellow orange. So that's a, that's a pretty nice. I might add just a little bit more or a little more yellow, just to lighten it up just a little bit more. And we can mix it all in there good. See now how much lighter it is. And then you're gonna want to take your your sticks and just brush them gently up and down one side, and then just lay them aside to dry. And you're gonna get your fingers a little bit messy here. But that's okay because if you've got some paper towel nearby you can always dry them with that and then after you've painted this side of your popsicle sticks thank you cameraman after you've painted this side of your popsicle sticks and they've dried you're going to want to come back and here's what i did earlier and then paint the back side and you're going to want to let that dry as well and let those all finish drying and so you're saying to yourself, well, what am I going to do while those take a while to dry? Well, we still have to make the actual body of the carrot itself. So that's what we're going to need the papers for. So we're going to send our popsicle sticks off to dry. And we're going to start making our um, triangular carrots. Now, in order to do that, you actually need your popsicle sticks um, to trace them. So you might want to grab a few others. Um, but you're going to lay your popsicle sticks on your paper like a triangle, like so. I actually did them in the corner because I don't like to waste paper. And then you just want to trace it with your pencil until you get a nice triangle shape. And you want to make sure that you've got them placed right up to the edges here. And then with your triangle shape, 
you're going to need to do both a front and a back side to your carrots. So I recommend that you fold your paper in half. By folding your paper in half, you'll get two when you cut them out. And so then you just want to take your scissors, I'm gonna cut this half away, and then cut our triangles out like so. And there's our triangles, and you'll get two triangles. So if you wanna make a bunch of carrots, um, just keep tracing them out. You can use this as a template and keep tracing out on your paper. Again, if you wanna use your scrapbook paper, you can keep tracing out on there too, but you're going to need two triangles for a carrot. So the next thing you need to do is decide what topping you're going to use for your carrots. If you're going to use the streamer topping, that's pretty easy to do. You just wanna take your roll of green streamers and you're going to cut out three strips of streamer length. And you want to make them about, mm, I'd say about 10 inches. And you're going to unfold that in half. That might actually be a little long, so maybe eight inches. And you want to cut off the extras you want. When you have, when you have your six to eight inches, fold it in half, and then cutting from the open end, which would be here, not from the folded end, you want to cut strips towards the fold. I think I averaged about five on mine. This one we're gonna do four. So that you end up with three separate pieces of what look like grassy fingers. And then what you would do is take your Elmer's glue and you're going to want to glue a strip right across the top here. And then you want to lay your grass, or the, the vegetation, I guess, of the carrot. Because the carrot, while it's the actual food weed, is technically the root of the plant. And then glue them up on top like that. And then you're going to run another bead of glue all the way along the edges. Just like that and put your other carrot slice right on top. Now, if your lines don't match up, that's okay. Just move it around and get it nice and as straight as you can. And then you're gonna take your popsicle sticks and you're going to run one more bead of glue all the way down and all the way across. And Put one at the top and then put a bead of glue on the top of each end of your popsicle stick and run your next one down this side to the end and put a bead of glue on top of that and match it up on this side. When it all dries you can come in with a, a scissors and trim off the edges. The last touch that you want to do is you want to add some pencil markings onto your carrot because carrots often have little grooves and lines and hairs on them. Um, it might be hard to see in the film here, but um, it adds a little bit more real, realistic features to it. And then you want to find some ribbon. Maybe you have um, some extra ribbon laying around. And then you're just going to want to cut off enough to tie a bow with. Again. Um, you just want to make a loop and then bring another loop through and pull it out like you're tying your shoes and then tighten it up until you have a nice little bow and a little bit more glue on top Oops. and there you are and then just let your carrot completely dry if you would like to make this a refrigerator magnet um, then you just need to purchase some magnets from uh, Target or Walmart or your local office supply store will have them or Staples. Um, you can order them online too since we're not supposed to go out a whole lot right now. And then you can place a magnet on the back side of this like right here and it would be a really cute refrigerator magnet too. Um, if you want to hang it up you could also glue some yarn behind it and make it um, a little hanging for your wall also. Just be aware that just like in natural vegetation your grass will flop around a little bit. But there's your one carrot. Now we can also make one with Easter grass. And I will tell you that 
after glitter, the craft project supply that I hate the most is Easter grass. My poor children do not get Easter baskets because I hate Easter grass with ever fiber of my bean. But Easter grass does make a fun craft. So we dug it out of storage from where I've had it for probably the last decade. And we're going to play with it today. When you pull it out of the Easter grass bag, um, a lot of times when they insert them into these bags, they come pre-folded, which makes it a little bit easier to pull them out. It just makes a tremendous mess. Um, and when you get your Easter grass and you've pulled it out, look for its natural bend. And you want to kind of pony it through with your fingers, your thumb and your, your forefinger. And then take a hair tie and you want to wrap it around that folded bend. And you want to do that twice. If you don't have a clear hair tie, you can use a colored one. Um, we're going to tie a bow around this when we're done anyway, so that will hide it. And then shake your grass out a little bit so you can get rid of any long, strain, kind of weird looking ones. And you can fluff it a little bit and anything that falls out. That'll save up the mess much later. And then you can throw all this lovely mess away or save it for next year's Easter baskets. Okay, so we're going to set that off to one side. Now again, we have to get our triangles and I have a couple other pre-cut triangles for this one and this time though it's going to be a little bit different because you're putting such a big chunk under here you're going to need to use your hot glue gun so this will be a part of the craft that the kids can't do they'll need help with a parent or caregiver um, you're going to want to simply put a bead of hot glue here at the top of the one triangle and place your easter grass nice and firmly onto it like that and then you want to also Put a bead of hot glue in each corner. We'll come back later and secure it down again with more hot glue, but this will get us started here on this. And you're just going to want to put these into each place. And that gives a nice set of volume to your carrot. Our previous carrot was kind of flat. This one actually looks like it's a little bit rounded because of the um, puffiness of the grass on top. Now again, you're going to want to use your popsicle sticks. The ones we just painted are still wet, so we'll pull some of the prepared popsicle sticks out that we have already done. And here again too, you're going to want to put your hot glue bead on your paper. And I would recommend doing these one at a time because hot glue does dry very quickly. And you're going to want to push up on the paper to make it meet up with your popsicle stick. You can also glue it to your triangle before you glue it to the bottom one if you think that'd be easier. Um, it doesn't really matter. And then another one there. And another one here. Like so to finish that off. And again, you want to take your pencil. You want to put a little bit of... Um, lines on your carrot. It gives it some depth. You might want to try curving your lines, making them messy. You don't want them very geometric or straight, or straight so that your carrot looks a little more realistic. And then it's time to choose a ribbon again. Um, I guess we'll go with the, the blue and white one this time. You're going to want to kind of gather your Easter grass up like a really messy ponytail. And if it got caught in the glue of your carrot, like that one did, that's okay. You can just trim it out. And then you want to Tie your bow around your Easter grass, like so. It'll also make it nice and secure. And then I can do a lot of things upside down, but not tying ribbon. So we'll do it this way. And there you are with a nice little bow on your Easter grass carrot. So this would make a cute decoration to put into an Easter basket, to hang on your wall, to, to display um, somewhere for your kids to play with, um, encourage them to eat their carrots and their vegetables. Or again, you could place a magnet on the back side of it and hang it on your fridge as a giant magnet too. They also make cute gifts for grandparents, for kids who are bored right now during quarantine if they want to make something for people they love and miss seeing, this would be a cute idea for them to do too. When you're all done, you have a whole plate of carrots that your kids can play with. So I hope you enjoyed that craft today and I look forward to seeing you again later this week. Bye-bye.